homesteading in Arizona, probably not what you think. Arizona is a large state ranging from highly mountainous and wooded areas to the high desert which gets some snow and it gets pretty hot but not extreme and then clear down to the southern desert areas that get quite hot. Just about anywhere in Arizona you can harvest enough rainwater to support yourself and your livestock. Only 1,000 square feet of rain harvesting surface area will get you about seven to 8,000 gallons of water annually, which turns out to be about 20 gallons a day. So you just need to build a rain harvesting system that's large enough to support the life that's on your homestead. Maybe make sure that you have twice as much as you really need. A good way to harvest a lot of rainwater is to make use of your land. In fact, when it rains hard, this entire driveway runs down into swells and can go into that pond as a reservoir and overflow out into an area that I've prepared as an orchard. I have swells around the rest of the driveway and all of that water can run down into the swells and around to the pond. There's a swell here all the way up to the gate. There's swells. So there's, it's almost like a gutter that runs down this side and it, and it spouts off that way around the homestead. And the same thing with this side here, runs off into the swell around the perimeter of the homestead, which makes its way back to the pond. Don't worry about my outhouse. I'll be wrapping it in wood as soon as possible. But that is wind damage. And that's something no one told me about. And I would say wind damage is probably the number one thing you need to worry about and prepare for in addition to the obvious food, water, and shelter. I had a hunting blind here that was damaged eventually. I had a hoop house over there that because my dog damaged it, wind got in there and tore it up. You can make things last, but you need to build them a little more solid. This is one and a half inch PVC pipe bent across. It's about a 14 foot hole by 32 feet. And then it's covered in between four to six ply, uh, you know, four year greenhouse plastic. You see this hoop house has been here for years longer than the one that blew away. But my dog never put a hole in this one, and so it's actually held up pretty well. I just covered it with some more plastic before winter. I'm working on a cistern over here, like the one I built on, on the shop. For now, the rainwater goes over to a container there. And all of this overflow can come into this well, and I'm going to finish digging it all the way around the corner of the property, back to the pond that I already showed you. So I think I'm gonna cut it across diagonal right here so that it can trickle down. And then as it makes its way across, any excess will make its way back over into the swell on the other side of the fence that goes out into the orchard. You can grow a ton of food in the high desert at least. This is six rows of potatoes I just planted. All of this arugula you see growing around this, the Hugo cultures, I planted that like last spring and I've almost never watered it and so there's still stuff growing there on the two hugo cultures that I didn't really attend to and then in the geothermal and the hoop house uh, I'm a new gardener and and I'm just figuring this out and I started with native soil with no amendments and uh, just one harvest at the end of fall I harvested 40 pounds maybe I did 80 pounds total that year but this year is going to be a lot more successful I have another 3,600 gallon cistern that's under here it's just hand dug lined with a liner covered with timber 
and I just put a larger vent on top of the lid so that it doesn't get humid in there. Between the pond and the two cisterns that I have so far, I can harvest 15,000 gallons roughly and store that much roughly every year, which is about 40 gallons a day, every day. Now that I'm figuring out my landscape and whatnot, there's a part here that just just slopes down into what is kind of a natural pond outside of the fence here. I'm going to make use of that and I'm going to irrigate it over into my swell system so that the pond will fill really fast. It will in fact overflow, but then I can redirect the rest of that water. So it's kind of one large system and it goes out to the orchard and possibly another cistern out there. Most of the rain comes during the monsoon season, so you need to be prepared and ready to harvest all that rainwater over, you know, a short few months and, and a lot of it over just, you know, overnight I can fill my cisterns. So you gotta be ready for it, <laughs> but it happens. <laughs> and the, the people that talk about global warming and the southwest is going to run out of water because scientists have kind of predicted that it's not an immediate problem it would take at least 50 to 100 years before we really cut back we're getting about 11 inches annually and it would take like 100 years to cut back an inch off of that so it's definitely doable for now and and really you would just need a larger system for you could probably do it for another 500 years you just have to have four times the size of harvesting space. Of course you can dig a well, but wells can be, you know, 600 feet, maybe a thousand feet deep. So it can be pretty expensive. Rainwater harvesting is a frugal option that you can start off with right out the gate. Arizona is a large state. Down south, it, 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 further you go south, it can get pretty hot, you know, 110, 115. And then again, in, this, in the winter time, it doesn't get nearly as cold. Sometimes it doesn't snow at all. Um, the further you go north, you know, that can really change. In the high desert, where I am, it gets down to 50 degrees almost all summer. Sometimes it only gets down to like 60, maybe a couple nights 66. So the swing from going from a potential 97 degrees down to maybe at 66 at night, that's a big jump and so the temperature variation is a big deal it reduces the grow season you know to like six months and so it's good to have hoop houses geothermals greenhouses things like that so you can grow throughout the year where i am it just doesn't get nearly as hot as a lot of people think it does i haven't seen it hotter than 97 and it usually doesn't get below well there's a couple weeks that it hit like zero it doesn't usually get below zero. I think it hit maybe negative five once this year. So it does get hot and it does get cold, but it's not extreme on either end. We're getting close to the end of March and you can see this is a hoop house that's not heated or anything. And there's a lot of alfalfa growing and there's some cabbage from fall and some broccoli, you know. I. I really didn't push this hoop house very hard and there's still stuff growing. I even have, those are green onions coming up uh, early, you know, it's, it's just getting toward the end of March. Most people don't plant till the middle of May. If I had planted this with a bunch of Swiss chard and kale and things like that, arugula, it'd probably be brimful right now, but I just everything doesn't unfold the way you exactly want it to all the time and you know this is where we're at the soil is not great when you look out there it damn near looks like the desert but there is a lot of green and foliage that'll grow in it in the high desert and it turns out that it's almost equal parts loamy silty clay it's not ideal it's not the ideal soil, but it's not horrendous. You can grow stuff in it. And then with amendments, like my soil is basically just compost and manure added to the native soil over almost three years now. And it works pretty well. Here's a free and awesome opportunity for you guys. If you want to learn more about land buying, 
there's a webinar I'll put a link to it down below it's on the 23rd so just a couple days away you could go over there and take the free webinar learn all sorts of stuff about buying land and if you want to buy land through that company that's giving the free webinar I'll put a link down below that'll save you 10% off of your land you can own or finance with bad credit for as little as $200 a month a lot of people think that there isn't any life you know wildlife out and around and at least where I'm at in the high desert I have seen wild horses run across my property uh, antelope elk I haven't seen a mule deer but I did see tracks for a mule deer I haven't seen cougar but there are cougar tracks Bob Bob cat tracks um, there's even some sort of mysterious jaguar out here that's black and oh I've seen a black bear and there is quite a bit of wildlife out here oh and the birds a lot of birds that's why I have bird feeders like this right now there's a, a raven flying overhead <laughs> but there's a lot of really beautiful colorful birds I have this mountain bluebird that I see the most probably I get a lot of hummingbirds there are tanagers different kinds cardinals even so red and yellow and oh the the yellow-headed blackbird lots and lots of really cool wildlife that come around and in monsoon season when my pond fills last season it overflowed with uh, frogs little tadpoles and you'll hear the croaking there's hundreds of frogs croaking and it's just like an orchestra at night it's pretty wild I dug a 10 foot deep uh, six by six no is it it's eight by eight root cellar and I hit caliche that's why three feet of it is above ground but even like this this root cellar stays about 40 to 50 degrees cooler in the summer and about 20 to 30 degrees different in the winter which is great it's it's a pretty ideal place to store stuff and I'm gonna put a large I'm gonna put a better door and a large vent on top like I did the cistern to keep the humidity down after fall harvest last year I put you know 40 pounds of spaghetti squash and corn and potatoes and tomatoes all kinds of stuff in there and I just barely finished eating that stuff up uh you know maybe last well this early this month or last month that idea of using the earth to change the temperature is a smart move in arizona as well as many other parts on the planet but that's how the geothermal works you know i have 200 linear feet of four inch tubing that's about four feet underground and it regulates the temperature in the geothermal and and the same thing happens even more effectively with the root cellar if you had a tractor I dug that by hand if you had a tractor and you really went down 10 feet maybe 12 feet and did it with level ground I think you could probably get that roughly you know 50 60 degrees year round in there and I'm gonna build mine up around the sides and I should be able to achieve that as well you see all that grass out there that's called hairy grandma grass and it's actually a good feed for livestock it goes on for as far as you can see and a large chunk of my land I just went and cut that down and harvested hundreds of pounds of feed for my goats and pigs and they love it I made a little simple hay baler that I keep over in the agricultural shed there so I just stuff it full and I squish down bells and lock it in place there's a course on my website if you want to check it out and a free video here on YouTube about it uh, but that has saved me I mean it really is literally offset my cost of feed by 50% and I think this now that I know what I'm doing I want to get a tractor to harvest it eventually because it takes forever to cut it down but if I had a tractor, an example, I could go out there at least twice a year, cut all the grass down in one day, and then bell it up over a week probably, and I should be able to produce twice as much feed as my animals need, which means that I could sell it to locals, you know, 
for a fair price and make some money off of that grass. The swells were loaded with squash last season too, and I just planted tons of sorghum. It's related to corn. It makes good grain, and I could make flour out of it. And all those swells I showed you, I went and planted sorghum in it. And the, and the sorghum is drought tolerant. It grows really well. It's like a weed almost. It just pops up. And uh, this coming season, I'm sure I'll harvest several pounds of flour from sorghum I grew here. There are a lot of areas like Arizona in Colorado, Nevada, Texas, uh, New Mexico, Mexico. <laughs> so... You know, Arizona's not the only place that has this southwestern climate and whatnot. There's a lot of other places that are similar to it. It's definitely not what most people think of when they think of ideal homesteading, but it's also not as treacherous as a lot of people think that it is too. It's just, you know, people moved into the United States, I think it's just obvious. Go, if there's really green areas with tons of livestock or wildlife and water it, those are the obvious places to inhabit when you look at cities they're around water sources so being out in the middle of nowhere where there's not necessarily a water source not in the standard way of thinking it's just not as common but it is definitely possible personally moving off grid and starting my homestead has been the very best decision i ever made in my life Starting on the 21st, which is tomorrow, you guys can get this bundle that has over 100 plus ebooks and courses. It's called the Off Grid Homestead Bundle. You can get that, and for every person that buys using my link below, I will also enter you to win my homestead kit, which is red tea, blue tea, green tea, corn flour, and black powder tonic that are some of my most commonly used staples on the homestead that's why they've become products on my website <laughs> so you'll be entered to win my homestead kit and i'm going to give you all everyone that orders the bundle using my link i'm going to give you all all three of my ebooks and both of my courses all of this stuff it's only 50 bucks if you bought everything individually seriously it'd be like five thousand bucks but there are a ton of huge creators involved in the bundle and whatnot. I'm sure you've heard of a lot of them, probably watched some of them or are subscribed. And they're all just offering their ebooks and different content. And by joining all together, they sell a lot more of them. And I get a little kickback. And to motivate you to make the purchase, I'm just throwing in separate my ebooks and my courses, as well as a chance to win my homestead kit. So check that out. Leave a comment below, guys, if you have any questions, and I'll catch you on my next video.